Join us on a journey to discover a mysterious iteration of Eridu in South Wales. Stephen Willis is back to demonstrate his mastery of star map navigation, coupled with his research into Sumerian law via the corpus of Sumerian literature. Through this, as well as a thematic comparison between landscapes in South Wales and the depiction visible in the Adder Cylinder Seal in the British Museum, Steve is able to demonstrate a remarkable resonance with Eridu. Steve's work holds huge implications for building a picture regarding the migrations to Britain from Mesopotamia. We are privileged to be joined by Steve for a series of upcoming lectures based on his research, which support theories of migration put forward by Wilson and Blackett. Please see Steve's first video if you haven't already, and please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you. Um, so before we get going with um, the search for Eridu, Steve, um, yeah. I just wanted to ask a couple of questions about Hen Wen, uh, which we covered yeah. last time, um, and the, the constellation of the, of the swine. Um, yeah. One thing that struck me afterwards when we were re-watching was your, uh, your comparison between the story of Hen Wen and the story of Albine. Um, yeah. I found this really interesting because it, it, it didn't really click the first time when we were going through it. I, I could see you were making the, the association with the, with the migration, but yeah. the, a certain sort of literary aspect of that really interested me um, in as much as I don't think anyone before has made a literary comparison between Hen Wen and Albine. Um, right. You know, you've got this. You've got the the whiteness implied in the name. You've got yeah. a, a a a female character of you know huge importance, uh, whether that's political or magical. Um, yeah. And then you've got the fact that it's a, a migration story. You know, they they're coming from yeah. somewhere else to Britain, and then also that then that this uh, matriarchal figure then is responsible for a. Uh, a race of giants afterwards um uh, i think uh hen wen gives birth is it to a to yeah. a giant cat cat monster or something or yeah i think that's up in north west wales because from arriving in south east wales she then goes to pembrokeshire mm. i believe and then up to north wales i think it was a wolf in pembrokeshire wolf and something else i can't remember now but i yeah. was only just focusing on the one part Yes, but they, uh, they, um, it, um, just, just if we're talking about Albine, obviously, uh, yeah. uh, one thing that's been sort of thrown at the Albine story is the it, it's it's meant to be a way of ex just explaining why the island was populated by giants when Brutus turned up, mm. and yes. Albine was said to have been this you know progenitor of giants, and I think it's quite interesting the the mon the the monsters that uh, Hedwen gives birth to. <laughs> You know their 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 great size is also you know there, there's a giant giant aspect to it, um, yeah. And and I just thought that it was really interesting that uh, you know I've never read anyone making that sort of comparison, and and I'm really interested yeah. that you might be a first there with that one. Um, um, brilliant. Yeah, the, the, I did read. I can't remember where I read it, so I didn't put it in at the time. That somebody had made a connection that it was a persecution of a female religious figure. That's as far as I can remember. But the uh, migration story recall. But I can't remember who made that connection. Oh, that would be um, right. fascinating to find yeah. out because it's it's a it, you know it once you sort of break it down into its sort of basic pieces, the yeah. the comparison is quite easy. Um uh and I thought that was really fascinating to show that there is a separate Welsh tradition. And then the 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 other thing that struck me as interesting is that it, the the how I don't know English version. Uh, let, let's break it. Maybe that's maybe not such a good way of putting it. But the, it, Albine, um, yeah, it's sort of like it has a very historical form. You know, it, we're talking about a, a king in a place that has his daughters, and there's political aspects, yeah. and we get names, and it's all very, you know. Uh, uh, I don't want to say dry, but it's um, uh, it has a certain 
materialistic element to it you yeah. know that yeah. could be very whereas the hen wen story is is completely fantastical you know it's <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's 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 sort of you know uh mm. full of symbolism but it's the fantastical one that can lead you to a real place yeah with physical evidence yeah yeah and that uh, yeah. is absolutely mind blowing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, it can lead you to the constellation of the Sow, you know, near the foothills of Munnard Lloyd, exactly where it's, it's said it's, to be. The story says, yeah, yeah. And that is yeah, absolutely you... wild, in my opinion. It's just. Um, yeah. Um, I, I won't say anything yet, but uh, there may be some other wild ones to come. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I mean, some it, of them, I, I still, I still don't get some of them. I just think, look at it and go, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, 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 that it just really struck me as amazing, and and I really get why Ross got so excited about this now because this isn't just us making a you know a, a good fair literary yeah. interpretation of historical evidence. Yeah, this is a mm. whopping great mega structure. On the yeah. ground with yeah, with uh, you know matching place names, matching yeah. up to the zodiac. It's just in, it's just crazy. Um, yeah, you uh, can't ask for anything more corporeal and uh, material and in terms of evidence than that, can you? And it almost well, makes yeah. the literary stuff look a little bit more flimsy in comparison, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. it does. <laughs> it's, just... it's even the shapes of mountains, um, the, the even shapes of walls. There are two walls which. You look at them and you think, well, that is that constellation and that's that constellation by the shape of a wall. Mm. Which is again. But then it's like on the screen now. Um, can you see the screen now? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, some of these things on you is. Um, oh, let me let me try this. Pen. This is for next time. But this year, those yeah. two square bits. Um, for there and for there represent yeah, mountains. Yeah, and, no. and this is and that's Shamus, uh, the sun god, um, just rising up through it. Okay, yeah. Okay. Well, okay. So, but is that image right? Um, those two mountains, I think they could possibly be on the on the ground somewhere, and Shamus as it comes up through those two mountains may represent on the ground where, um. The summer solstice, the sun would rise. Yeah. And oh, it, right. And the sun would come up between these two mountains. Mm. It's not, um, and on top of this mountain, uh, I won't go because this will be for the next time. <laughs> um, <laughs> where there's this bit of two canes, and you follow a line through them, it comes to a, another mountain where the sun would rise. But on that mount, the first mountain where the canes are, you got this shape on it. Yeah. So it's as if that these images may, as only a may, have mm -hmm. originated from here and then drawn uh, and taken out there. So, yeah. so do you think this cylinder seal um, um, points to, to a certain viewing spot where, where you get this view from? No, no. Um, it, it, like this, this bit here mm. um, is what we're going to be looking at today. Yeah. That's Enki, um, two rivers, and is uh, that's supposed Elder to be, rivers. yeah. And then the next one, I'll be looking at that and that, and then at some point, we'll be looking at those two. Right. Okay. Um, so it won't be a view and point. It's, but the diagrams seem to match. Yes. Uh, yeah. Some of these diagrams seem to match the landscape. Okay. Right. If that makes sense. Yes. No. No. That yeah. does. Oh, yeah. I suppose because we're we're, it, it, is it sort of like trying to place the three dimensional thing on a two dimension? You, do you know what I mean? We're, yeah. We're trying to yeah. place a, 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 a whole landscape and its uh, cosmological environment in a cylinder seal. It doesn't quite mm. line up to yeah. a specific. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I see what you mean. Yeah. But, Great. Uh, yeah. Let's, well, let's let's do Enki then. Right, and so this one, um, Enki, the god of 
basically the, he's a Sumerian god um, rather than the later Babylonian year. Um, what we're going to be trying to do is we'll be looking at some old Sumerian texts and trying to apply them to the Welsh landscape then and see what the words on both ways come up with. Um, so the main aim is to find the city of Eridu. Um, when we go through it, uh, there's this one location which stands out. Um, the name of it and, and the rest stand out as if it is Eridu itself. And like I said, on this today we just be looking at this section. Um, we'll be looking at these two rivers, the crown, um, this little animal by her. Um, and we're going to be putting that onto the Welsh landscape and seeing if there's anything written in there which matches the old Sumerian texts. Right. So that's a, that's a sort of the idea of, of today. Um, I can't read that myself, but apparently the other cylinder or the Ada cylinder, um, it, this, this just basically says Ada scribe. So just mm -hmm. saying who's written it. Um, so, so no anyway, actual description of what they're trying to... Not as far as I'm aware. Whether there is or not, uh, I, I don't know. Um, but what, I, what I've what i learned it is it, it means just Ada or other scribe. Okay. It's the, per, the person who wrote it. Yeah, sure. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. yeah. That's a cool mark type thing. Is there a... Um mainstream interpretation beyond it being um nice images do they is there a yeah there are people who tried to work out the cosmological version of what these are trying to represent them mm -hmm. etc like um but because at enki here um it did you no know, but the two rivers um is this like basically apply to a Monde aquarius yeah yeah. Um, but on the ground, it doesn't represent Aquarius as such. But the the, the constellation Aquarius might be included in this Enki character. But to the side of that, with all the watery symbols like Pisces, Aquarius, Capricorn, um, around it between two rivers, which we've got here, mm -hmm. um, it seems to be this this figure of Enki is in, and that's where a uh, his city would be. Okay. One of, yeah, one of the main things on this time I'm using, um, this one here. I mean, it's, it's, it's known as the ETCSL, or the Electronic Text Corpus of Sumerian Literature. Um, if you just follow the link that's on there, you might, you might have to type it or, or just type in ETCSL. I mean, all these texts are on there. They've got the translation, the transliterations on there. Um, cool. It's, so if you need to have a, have a look and, and, and check what the, they actually say, like, is a, I've quoted them throughout anyway um, for what we need. But yeah, that that's the main... That sounds like a fantastic resource. It, it is. Sure. It is. It, it, it's excellent. Hmm. Um, this is just from last time, just to reiterate, because... I think I said last time it's an important concept to understand um, how the Babylonians or the Sumerians uh, treated the stars or the celestial phenomena. Um, because you'll see today, for example, one saint you can link to a constellation as such. So the name of the saint is the same as the name of the constellation. So mm. there's, there's a question then, is, was the saint named after the constellation? Or... Or wasn't there a saint and it was just somebody a saint? Did they, they turned this constellation into a saint then? Have I, might have, no? I might have something to add on that oh, topic. Right. I, I had yeah. a look at the um, beginning and it's it's uh, it's a family I've been looking at a lot recently. So I might I have a bit of an opinion on that. So I'm looking forward to to get into that. <laughs> I mean, I mean it's, it's not the only one. It is quite a few saints mm. Um, mm. which match constellation names. Um, I, I don't know. What happened in the past? Of how, how they've got mixed, or um, but yeah, this this seems to be a recurring theme. Then um, these two quotes from Eric Arena. Um, so they they act in a way. Then, whereas we were praying to a saint, they were praying to a star. 
because they believe they had some kind of heavenly power then. Um, and, and they could mediate in a role or they could heal someone. Or, But the important thing is that this idea that they treated the stars in this way, um, as we carry on going through um, presentation by presentation, it'll become more obvious that there's something, something going on. Um, the second one, this is from Leonard William King, um, being the praise of the lifting of the hand. So when you lift up your hand and you pray, but they, they used to do it to the stars. I, I just read it, section five contains praise to certain stars, which are not regarded as inanimate, but as personified as deities. Uh, this personification of the stars and planets is not surprising, for there are not lack of proofs of the greater gods, even when addressed by name in prayer, were regarded as astral powers. I mean, you can see a role of a saint in that description anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, it's just the way that they were treated that needs to be understood then. Um, why they prayed to stars in the first place is unknown as far as I'm aware. Um, but they seem to do that. So the, the next slide then is just some words. Um, we touched on some of them last time. So there's a couple more, you know. So the, the Floyd, uh, even though it doesn't mean star, it seems to be the word that they use to identify a star. Um, Seren or Ser would be star. Um, but Floyd is, is the description of that object then. From last time, I just put some of the words from last time, uh, Floyd Winnemach. Um Floyd is uh, the name that is used or appears next to so many stars. Um, it doesn't mean star itself, but it's the description of the star then, being pale, faint, shining, um, holy, blessed. Mm. Um, that would be the bit that we, they treated the, the stars like saints then or Mm. Astral deities. Um, Moch is a interest, interesting one as well because you can use the word Moch to identify Marduk, but also the planet Jupiter. Yeah. Um, there, there are other words you can identify Jupiter with. Uh, Bran, for for example, is another one. And what I'm talking about is a star map now. Mm. Um, so where there are certain names, and you go right. Jupiter is supposed to be here, then the brand appears. It's supposed to be here. Bran appears again and it repeats and then same with Mach. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the ones we used last time. Um, I got Seth, you know, it won't be used this time, but it will be in future. I just put it in, put it in here. But it's a and I can never remember the exact quote that the history of the world is written on the stones of Oh yes, the the triad. Yeah, and I can never. I, I should write it down somewhere. This is the um, this is the the triad that um some people have taken to interpret the um Egypt. Yeah, yeah, Egypt and the hieroglyphs. Yeah. Do you know what? I was having this thought the other day actually about <laughs> the, hmm. the 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 all the knowledge of the world being written on written on star maps. But, um... Yeah. Um. Because what I found interesting is uh, there's not a huge amount of them, but where they do appear quite often, the, the other part would be Thet something, and the mm. other part will identify um, an attribute of that constellation or star. Mm. So if there were a lot of them that be uh, now long since gone, I mm. mean, the whole place could be littered with these stones, um, with something written on them. Um, sort of given the knowledge of each location or the events that occurred. Yeah. So, so yeah, we we will at some point come across that word and and then right then the next one then we got D or Z, yeah. which means D or Z, which um uh, is black, dark, wicked, angry, um, etc. Now, in Babylonian sort of astronomy, um, especially with a lot of omens, um, if a planet is dark, 
it's implied to have a negative evil connotation about it. Um, now, there are, again, there are a number of locations where D, I'll show one today with DOZ, in fact, a couple of lines down. Um, there's an omen which will have D, will have D on the end of it, um, implying that there's something negative related to that. Um, and they'll normally have a planet name first okay. on the ground, yeah. Okay. And then we have uh, next word is Pika or Pika, which means pointed or sharp. Um, now this again comes up at several locations, and each time it can be linked to the horns of an animal. Cool. Now probably the most famous one that people know of from Wilson and Blackett's work is. Um, I think it's Koida Pika down in the Singenith Valley. Okay. And he, I think he had it as the, the wooded field of the javelin. Uh, rings a bell. Yeah, well, on Manith Mayo, um, most, some of the stars of the constellation or Orega, or um, in Babylonian terms, the croc, there's an old man saying, Oh, sorry, no, I was going to go, that's something different. Right. On there, there's, there's, um, on that mountain, there's got Koida Pika. But there's a star contained within that constellation called Capella, the little goat. Uh, and that goat, its horns, land exactly where Koida Pika is. So uh -huh. rather than the wooded field, <laughs> so rather than the wooded field of the javelin, yes. it becomes the wooded field of the goat's horn. The goat's horn, yeah. Yeah. But it's still a sharp end. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a point. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, yeah brilliant. <laughs> so the next word then is Gwern. Um You'll see a, this a lot on in the Welsh landscape. So um, it basically means alder or place where alders grow. Now alders love damp, moist, wet conditions um, as as a plant, um, and they can employ a wetland, a swamp, because they'll quite happily grow they they produce something within the the sap that uh, makes uh, the tree waterproof. All right. Okay. Uh, and I think I think they built um, Venice. A lot of Venice is built using alder because it is naturally waterproof. They haven't got to do anything with it. Oh uh, right. Okay. That's interesting. Burn. It can imply that, but because it places on the Welsh um, with Gwerna, so you have Gwerna, and then you have a word. Which could imply the swamp of, or the marshy area of, but it. So it wouldn't be all the because there's one like Gwynis, Gwynis cedar or cedar or something like that, which means, uh, if you let read it literally, it'd be alder of the cedar, which, which yeah. doesn't really. Right. Um. So anyway, as I was going through, I started noticing, that where these old men are saying Venus should be. It was a Gwerna. And if you, if you look at the, the Welsh for Venus, for example, is Gwerna, which is phonetically very close to Gwerna. Yeah. Mm. So there, there were a couple of locations where Pamidus Oman, it was like, that definitely means Venus, for example. Yeah. Um, so we'll just look at one of the Gwernas today and uh, so you get an idea mixed with a D or Z to show to show what I'm trying trying to get at if okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. good um the, the, like I said the, there is one that in the crook again which is Manith Mayo and St. um you have Gwern and Milwa or if you use it the way I'm saying Venus the warrior or the Venus the soldier and there's a, an old man says, if Venus approaches the croc, there will be war. And then you got Venus the warrior. <laughs> wow. Fantastic. That, 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 that'll be for another time. But yeah, it's a, and, and this type of idea keeps on repeating with different planets, different, different constellations. I assume you'll go into the. Um... These these omens and and uh, where where they I assume that comes from the um, the uh, 
online database you were talking about the uh, of uh, yeah, I've got a uh, the ETCSL. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, the, in, in those, there'd be no mention of omens. Oh, they, they were other texts. I think that came later than the Sumerians. I like, don't quote me on that one. Mm -hmm. But um, they all seem to be Babylonian omens. They seem to be something that developed later. Oh right, okay. Right. On. Um, but they seem do seem to be on in the landscape, so mm. where they should be. <laughs> brilliant yeah looking forward to those <laughs> so key locations so we've got Anis Apica um, it, Anis no, is generally used for an island but it can't just mean area or enclosure of just a, a place like mm. um, area basically and Pika then the point of a horn of the horn. Now, Anisapika is exactly with the, the, the tips of the of Anisapika. I'll show that in, in, in a moment. The next one we got Tawin a Kigvran. Um, Kigvran is a, a raven, and Tawin is uh, like a small hill, a mound, mm -hmm. um, knoll, etc. So this is one that the uh, one of the omens I've quoted here. This is concerning Mercury. Um, if the if the fish, the goat fish, stands close to the raven, Mercury, fish and fowl will thrive. Mercury is visible in the goat fish. Um, now in the goat fish, just in, in front of the goat fish is Tonakikran, which means the knoll of or the or the mound or knoll of the raven. It's got no description of if it's good or bad, but because it's right next to a river and it's got um, fish and fowl will thrive. Yeah, it's, it's not like it's not like that. It's right on the edge of the river. Mm. So, yeah, sometimes these omens will be just a general sort of form like this, and mm. you and you can't really add more to it. Um. On, on the ground as such, but then others are more specific, and then you can try, like the Gwena Milwa, Venus a warrior, and the old man sort of matches the two and is in the right location. Mm -hmm. And then we got Gwenthi or Gwenthi or Dark Venus. Um, and remember, if it's something is dark, it's got a negative connotation. Um, so then there's an old man saying, if Venus approaches the fish, there will be defeat in the land, and Venus. Basically, it means Venus approaches the goldfish. Um, and that's from Erica Reina and, and David Pingree. <clears throat> and that's like Bana Planet, <laughs> Babylonian planetary omens. Yeah. So it's, it's from, from that text. So on the ground, just underneath the goldfish, you got Gwynethi. So you got this Gwynethi, dark Venus. Um, They'll be de defeating the lunch. You've got this negative connotation. Yes, yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's in the right place. For, and then if Gwen means Venus. Yes. Following, yeah. Modern day constellation, can I associate the goat fish with, or, or part of the sky, or part of constellation? Oh, Capricorn. Capricorn, right, uh, yeah. Capricorn, I, I, yeah. I did think so. I just didn't want to make so, the assumption. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, should, I should have said that. Capricorn, yeah. right, yeah. I just know that there's a few... Um, uh, where obviously certain animals are in different places in different <laughs> yeah. zodiacs throughout yes. the last thousands of years, so I don't yeah. want to make an assumption that I was. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. Okay, so the, the next place in um, there are other places that got Saint Bolas um, Cathedral. It's on in Newport. Um. But that is St. Gwynflew. Now, figuratively mean tail of an animal, a fish, or bird, or just simply tail. Now, this is where it starts to get interesting. <laughs> Let's say, use that word. Because the swallow is exactly where that cathedral is, St. Gwynflew's. And the swallow... Um, 
it, it basically means that tales, we've got the tales of the swallow, which is lambda, is in Pisces. Um, you got in Pisces, you got is two fish. In the Babylonian terms, the left hand one is a fish, and the right hand one is a swallow. Okay. And together, together they were known as the tails. Hmm. Right. So, um, the fish as well was known as Anunitem. Um, but the the fish on the left and the swallow on the right were both known as the tails together. So, you hmm. then go, like I said, the fish, the left hand side of Pisces. On the swallow, the right hand side of Pisces, but known together collectively as the tails. Um, so then we've got with the, the right hand side, which we're Alpha Piscium or the, the Alpha Star, sorry, Lambda Piscium. Um, you got Sinquin Flu as cathedral, where mm -hmm. flu can mean tail or fish or bird or tail of an animal, but it's got this tail connotation about it. So yeah. the saint has got this fish, sorry, this tail meaning to it, mm. exactly where one of these creatures, the swallow in this instance, one of the tails, is located. That's which right. then which then raises the question of they influenced each other at some point. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um what I was gonna say about uh, Gwynlu is that he is son of Gluis or Gluis of Gluising and Gluis is uh, said to have given his name to the area yeah. hence it was death you know henceforth known as Gluising yeah. but what's interesting is that his his sons that inherited from him were then said to have given their names to the local areas so it's, it's still known as Went, was it Wentlu right. Wentluge is it um, Wentluge yeah yeah, I went Luke, which is is from Gwyn Clue's name. But it's now, from what you're saying, it seems arguable that he knew which of his sons were possibly going to inherit certain areas, and they took their right. names from the... And they must... From the uh, area, or... Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, but I, I definitely... I'm convinced he's a historical character. He, he yeah, fits well yeah. in the genealogies. Yeah. He appears in the lives. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it seems like they were well aware of these these names in the yes. area beforehand, and that's how they then yeah. styled themselves. Well, when you when you look at um, th um, mystical societies, if, if you take, for, for example, India, they got swamis. And those mm. swamis, when they become enlightened, they change their name. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Out in North America, the, the, the Native American Indians. I mean, they change their names. Yes. I think. Mm. Or they give a name to, to reflect something. It, it, so I, I, can, I should imagine that is done through all, throughout all cultures at some point. Some Certain yeah. people have, have their names changed. To fit certain things, yeah. Pharaohs certainly seem to have several different names for um, various parts of their life or their yeah yeah yeah, yeah. initiating into uh, you know into certain uh, roles that they have to perform as pharaoh. Yeah. So pharaoh, yeah, absolutely. And the good thing about hieroglyphics is that when you suspect that one person is uh, the same person as another person with a different name, you can decode that and create the narrative and put the names together and get a whole story. Not every saint will, will have something will, that will match, but there are, like this saint here, um, it, it's a handful at, at, at best. It's not, so it's just this idea of, at some point, have they ad adopted the name of the area and called themselves that? Mm. Or, like you said, no, maybe a father's named their son. Yeah, after, I think, after this, yeah, I think yeah. Uh, Hugh Evans um, uh, nods towards the famous Colin of Langollen as well as this being a, an example yeah. of what you're talking about in, in yeah. his in his star map. So, um, I, I, I'm certainly open to the idea. It does seem to reoccur, and and you're not the only person who seems to be saying it. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, I I don't have the answer as such, but when I come when I show these, I say, well, look, there's this there's a question needs to be asked. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. I don't. I mean, does this go backwards in time? Does it come forward through time? Is there <laughs> is there a connection? Do people yeah. work it out by themselves? I mean, yeah, there are so many questions that can be asked. But yeah, it, it, unless it, that was the name of the landscape at the time, and uh, yeah. They were just named after the landscape, and they might not even been aware. Understood yeah. it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> and it's a pika. It's in yeah. that location. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Key Gran is right next to the river. There, where the eye of the goldfish is, Alpha Capricorni. Um, Kilvegan. It's there. Guernsey is around that area. Mm-hmm. St. Bullis, obviously, where the swallow is. The Ringland is there, and one of the four, what they call Royal Stars of uh, for Malhout, is it's there. Mm. Um, and and you, I just put the the map of the stars next to it. I think the next slide might show it in a bit more detail. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just, I just show you this. I don't know if you like my drawing as well. No, I think it's great. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I don't think there'll win any awards, but there we are. <laughs> the pointy hat is very good. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what they look like. Yeah, you know, I know. I was uh, admiring them in the cylinder <laughs> seal earlier. Yeah. You, you've captured it very well. Yeah, yeah. And the beard is brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right, so this... Henry, yeah. 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 So just above that, in the in amongst the trees on the bend of the river, you got all these sort of like earthquakes there. Oops. Yes. Um, and what looks like possibly Tamuli. On old maps, it's actually marked as camp and then Tamuli written on there as well. Okay. So okay. that would be where the head of the goldfish would be. Okay. Head of the goatfish in the uh... um it's so it, the horns were bigger and it's a pika wood. So the, the head is Henry. Yeah. And then you got and it's a pika wood to the top left. So you can see, can you see chemist commander in the middle? You see the relationship between them? Okay, so chemist commander, yeah, I can see chemist commander. Yeah. To the left of that. Yeah. Um you got Krieger Harris. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. just below that, you can see with the the contours match. Um, that's where Tawana Kifran is. It's not marked on on these maps, um, but you will see it on older maps. Okay. And then down. Sorry, is the is the Tawana Kifran the uh, the Raven the Raven Mound? Is it a natural feature? I don't know. I haven't been there myself. Mm. That's uh, I, I still got about another three hundred places to visit. But... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. I, I don't know on, the answer to that maps one. as a two one. Yeah, yeah. And um, these are the old, the older owner survey maps. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I don't know if this has come up with you now. You, you right in the middle. You got uh, Kiel Vegan. Yeah. Yes. Got it. Well, um, I think I've jumped ahead, but here we are. Um, Kiel can mean corner. Um, it can mean nape of the neck or back, for example. Ve can mean few, and gan uh, from before. Uh, with Dagan, etc., means uh, uh, scales of a fish. Mm-hmm. So f- from that, you'd, you'd have the, the view of the nape of the neck or the back of the scales of the fish. Now, since up the top now, you can just see, I don't know if... Uh, Nearly at the top left. So that would be with... And then if you just look down to the bottom, then you've got Kiel Vegan or the, the view of the nape of the neck of the... Yeah. Well... When you draw the constellation in, that's exactly where the nape of the neck of the goldfish would be. Right, this next one now is just to point out one, two, three, four of the stars and to show the relationship between them. Mm-hmm. So on the left hand screen, you've got the, the stars themselves, and I got the up the top in Capricornus. Mm-hmm. It's two two star circle. Um, that's what I showed you by Henry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's those two there, and on the left, 
you got Alpha, Capricorn, A, Tamulay. There's a couple of Tamulay there. Um, at the bottom, then you got Formal Hot, Hot. Mm -hmm. Um, we have Formal Hot. Um, we that's located where the the Bishton Castle is, um, okay. which apparently used to be one of um the Bishop of Llandaff's one of his residencies. Mm. Okay. But it might have been built on something previous. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So up above, then you got Alnair, which is a cane. And that's the cane right. I went went to have a look at. Mm -hmm. Um, and then above it, you got Gamma Grus, Grus, Grus. Um, mm -hmm. and it's a set of tumuli there. Now, if, if you look at the, the pattern of the stars in the left of the pattern ones on, on the right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they, they they match, and when you do overlay the star map, they're in the right location as well. Incredible, yeah. Um, like I said, I've got on the cane on Alne is there's, there's nothing left now. All you can see on the ground is just a couple of stones poking through, right? Um, in in a sort of circular shape. So there was a cane there, um, but that cane is on a hill called Grey Hill. Now, from before, grey, which means Floyd. Floyd, yeah. So you have on, on Hill Bryn, so you have Bryn Floyd, mm. or Star Hill, you could even call it. Mm. Oh, and there's, yeah. there's a cane on it for one of the stars. <laughs> nice. Right. That's brilliant. <laughs> um, like I said, I've got a video of a standard stone up in the stone circle, but I don't know if I should chance it. I don't know if, I mean, um, you can send it to me and I can add it into the video. Oh, you, right, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, a good way of doing it. And and that saves, and we can just, uh, I can do all, do all the faffing around later on. You could do yeah. a, you could just do a, if you want to just talk through a description of the video and, and, yeah. and, and why you think it's important and relevant now, and then um, Adam could edit the, the video, video in. Um. Well, the, the thing is, I don't know what, what relevance it would have, but it's on this yeah. star hill. Um, it mm -hmm. might be aligned to something, but I, I just don't know. So I, is, I, I, yeah. Sorry, is it near the can of um, Al, Al Flair? Al, oh, that's my right, then. Al Nair. Al Nair, Nair. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's near there. It's uh, 100 yards at oh. most. Wow. Maybe yeah. less. So compared yeah. to the size of the star map itself, it's negligible. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah basically, in the same from the place, cane, you yeah. can see the, the standard stone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fantastic. But uh, yeah, and so that this is it's only a small um, stone circle. Um, I'm going to say small. If it's five meters across, it wouldn't be any more than that. So there's a stone circle. It, in the middle is one of long stone line, which sort of points to a standard jet outside the stone circle. So that looks like it's pointing east. You, you go through one to the other. It might be going eastwards way, but where exactly towards east? Um, I, I haven't measured. I didn't. I didn't really check, but it does look like it's going east uh, from uh, the one the the big. Stone in the middle to the standing stone just on the outside of it. Have we crashed again? Yeah, yeah a little bit. bit yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, but it's all right. Um, I, I, I think I got what you were saying, Steve. You were saying that basically you think there's, uh, there could be some sort of sighting element. Possibly, yeah, towards the east, whether towards it's the east. a. The rising sun, it looks fairly dewy east. Um, so it could be the rising sun at the equinox, equinox but that's yeah. just that's just a guess. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't like to. Yeah, there's this, there's plenty, you know, that I think any of these um alignments are, are, are worth looking at and investigating, certainly, because oh, yeah, you know, all of these, um, pretty much all of them, people are getting getting astrolog astronomical alignments from um you know alexander tom did so much on so many circles and found so many examples of this yeah 
and that yeah. was in that was in the 60s and people have done <laughs> so much more since then so um i yeah i definitely think that's worth investigating and um it certainly rings true with everything else that we know mm. yeah yeah so like all right so we eventually now basically the, the first part is just to lay the land show them where these watery constellations are as such if i just go back yeah, the figure himself, which is Enki, mm. um, that's Aquarius. Obviously, Pisces at the bottom, and then Capricorn or the goldfish. So that figure of, of that bloke standing, mm -hmm. um, that would be Aquarius. Yeah, these are just some of the some of the attributes of Enki. Um, I, I well, I, I've got in there. He's uh, strongly associated with the constellation. Excuse me, of the Great One. Which is a Babylon, Babylonian term for Aquarius, excuse me, and the goldfish, which is Capricorn. Um, obviously, he's a watery sign. He's got these water attributes towards him. Uh, it is said that he raised the land in the marshes to build his city of Eridu. Uh, Enki's shrine is the E Absu, and was built in Eridu. Enki is associated with the Marga boat. And anybody familiar with the area we've just been looking at might have already picked up on something there. But um, Enki lived in the marshes. Uh, he was a master of enchantment, spells, wisdom, fertilization, um, brother of Enlil, beloved of Anne, god of wisdom. You, you get the idea mm -hmm. of, yeah. of, of what Enki is. Um, so... Uh, it might be best to read this first bit. So Enki was a god of the subterranean freshwater ocean, Absu, and was especially associated with wisdom, magic, and incantations and with the arts and craft of civilization. So what we're looking at to start off with is this word Enki. Can we find anything in the Welsh language that that will link the two together as such, where you can get some meaning to the meaning of Enki on some of his attributes then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's a lot of ends in Babylonian words as such or yeah. Sumerian. Yeah. And you go, whether the, the, the P has been added or lost or whatever, but N pen means Lord. Mm. And then the second part, there's no K in Welsh, the second part key is pronounced the same as the Welsh key. Mm -hmm. Which means, dear, beloved, precious, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that doesn't it? Yeah, um, it could mean that beloved Lord, and it is. It is Enki was described as beloved of Anne, who Anne or Anu, mm -hmm. um, Anne was the Sumerian um, in Enki in the World Order, and the Sumerian translation is is, is Lord Earth, so they don't match. The finesse brings some of the attributes in. Yeah. Beloved and precious and beautiful certainly cropped up in all yeah. those epithets that you listed. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. So then we got Eridu or Eridug. Um, Eridug, I think, is a Sumerian. Um, so Enki's beloved Eridug, E. Engara, E. Engura. Whose inside is full, right? If I is full of abundance, life of the land, beloved of Enki, temple built on the edge, um, befitting the artful divine powers, Eridog, your shadow extends over the mists of the sea. Rise and see without a rival, mighty awe inspiring river, which terrifies the land. Um High citadel standing firm on the earth, temple at the edge of the Engur, a lion in the midst of the Absu. Lofty temple of Enki, which bestows wisdom on the land, your cry, like that of a mighty rising river, reaches King Enki. Right, so I, I've underlined a couple of those things for, for a reason. So, E generally means, or E means house, in Welsh it be T. Mm -hmm. So if we're just breaking down this words, we breaking down Eridu first. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. Yeah. Then you go Ri or Ri, which is King, Prince, Lord, and Du or Dur, water, 
But then every dog, which would have been the Sumeria, and you got dog or the Welsh tug or dog, which means prosperity, abundance, mm -hmm. or the house of the Lord of water or abundance would be a possible meaning. Mm -hmm. So, huh. so from the the description, um, and I'm breaking down the the name into phonetic Welsh. You got a description of what era dog. Yeah, so you got the. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> so, on there, I've also written, "Rise and see without a rival, mighty o inspiring river, which terrifies the land." Mm -hmm. Um, this is from the TCSL Enki's journey to Nibiru. Nibiru is not the famous planet twelve and Nibiru. Nibiru. No. This is Nippur. Nippur. Oh, okay, right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, rise and see without a rival, more mighty, awe-inspiring river. Now, out where Eridu would be out in Iraq, it was, I think it's next to the Euphrates. I mean, those rivers used to flood, so you can get this first part, well, the second part, mighty, awe-inspiring river, which terrifies the land. But the second... The other part, right, rise and see without a rival. Well, what I can understand is that sea levels out there, um, day to day, only rise up to about two meters. Whereas where I believe Eridog is represented on the ground here, you've got a mighty sea, the River Severn, which has no we call rising, which, what, 15 meters plus? Yes, it's got an incredible tidal range, hasn't it? So that rise and see without the rival matches the River Severn better than it matches out in Iraq, the description. Yeah. <laughs> Coincident, of course, it could be. Um, but it's something, again, that needs to be, yeah. the question needs to be asked. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the, the drawing, by the way, that's... Uh, that's an AI drawing. <laughs> yeah, I did want to. <laughs> <laughs> I the the um the 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 river that terrifies the land makes me think of the the seven boar as well. Yeah, you know yeah. it's it's sort of like a almost like a little a little tsunami. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and sometimes not such a little tsunami as well. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah sometimes it, quite it a goes for miles, doesn't it? Yeah, sometimes. yeah. But yeah, that description of the rising, I mean, yes, the Euphrates and Tigris flood, mm. and that could that could mean the same thing, but the sea doesn't, unless it was some kind of flood scenario, as in a biblical flood, yeah, yeah, in in some way, which yeah. which is which also a possibility, yeah. Cool. But it, like I said, it, the temple is built on the edge. Um, anyway, let's go to the. Now, this is from the myth of Enki and Eridu. Um, then Enki raised the city of Eridu from the abyss and makes it float over the water like a lofty mountain. Its green fruit-bearing gardens he fills with birds, fishes too. He makes abundant. Enki is now ready to proceed by boat to Nippur to obtain Enlil's blessing in his newly built city temple. This second part... That's where the next one will start from, the next presentation. Cool. So we'll be going from here to, to Nippur. Right. So the Enki raised the city. So, right, if you look at the, the map, this sort of line here, like mm. drawn across and this walking, um, that used to be, as far as I can understand, all salt marshes. So that was all marshes. So it was the Gwent levels. Mm -hmm. um, so... Uh, I think it was the Romans who, who started building the seawall and uh, monks later have, have built other stuff, but to keep the, to, the sea out. Yeah. But all this would have been one big marsh. Yeah. And around well, that area there is a place called Will Crick Hill, which is right on the edge of the marsh. And then you've got the mighty rising river, this mighty rising sea there. You've got the marsh here. Yeah. And then you've got Eridu. 
um, right on the edge of the marsh. <laughs> so, so that's where I was started to look at, as in, well, if it's going to be represented on the ground somewhere, along that line somewhere would be where it where you think it would be. Yes, yeah. And then you got Newport for you, and that's uh, St. Winthrews. Um, and up that way, you got obviously Capricorn and Moravia. So mm -hmm. it's it's right by where it should be. Mm -hmm. So, make a bit of all these a minute. Right, so from the above quote, it can be clear that Eridu appears somewhat like an island in the landscape. Now, like I said, I mentioned World Creek Hill, which is, it would have been right on the edge of the marsh. Yeah. Um, Cadu um, has got to categorize as a prehistoric hill fort, which that's such a wide date in. Um, I, I don't know when you could really place that, but it's, it it's could all be, It could be, I mean, it could be anywhere from the Neolithic right through to yeah, right through to um, forty three AD. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 such a that is a massive generalization. I mean, obviously they were all thought to once be Iron Age, and now that's no, I said, yeah, been proven not to be true. And and some of them, are, a lot of them, are Bronze Age, and some of them are even Neolithic in origin. So uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah. So. That's, it's a bit of a vague term, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it is, yeah. But um, so you go Bull Creek Hill is a hill like just on the edge of the Grant Levels. The hill stands out from the surrounding low lying area, possibly giving it the appearance of floating over the water. The hill is several miles from the sea, but it's likely that the marshes would have covered the area of the Grant Levels before the introduction of sea defences and eventually a seawall that was that was established, reclaiming the land from the sea. A low Will Creek Hill stands out amongst the low lying land. On its own, it's not sufficient to be certain it does represent Eridu. So, the Sumerian myth then of Enkian Nunur saga, uh, we have the following passages. Oh, here we are. There's a seawall. I forgot about that. All <laughs> oh, right, great. Yeah. Hmm. So, I mean, you can see the, the quite the flat area. On, on you yeah. now, you can see this brown coming down here. That's about the height of the normal height heights. Obviously, you get them higher. Oh, but yeah. when but when you're down there, that is like up this height on this side. So it will it would have just come in and just flooded the whole area. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can see how low it is down by that house. That is yeah, yeah virtually the same as sea level, isn't it? Yeah. Crikey, yeah. So that was just a show that I forgot about that. So Will Creek Hill Fort. So Ninto said that Again, my Sumerian pronunciation might not be perfect. <laughs> a bit rusty, is it? <laughs> it's a bit rusty, like my Welsh and my English. <laughs> well, you don't get a chance to practice your Sumerian very often. No. So, uh, you've got an excuse for that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ninto said to Utu, let me advise you, and may you take heed of my advice. Let me speak words to you, and may you heed my words. From in the marsh, one man is able to see up here, is able to see up here. He is, from in the marsh, Enki, is able to see up here, is able to see up here. He is. He will set eyes on you. Now, that's on the ETCSL um, website as well, Enki and Nino, Nin Her Saga, and the lines there, 127 to 146. Um, so from that passage, it is clear that Enki is watching or searching. And since he is in the marsh, the place of Eridu, the city of Enki, it would be from that location he is watching. Which then becomes interesting because Will Creek Hill, which is on the edge of the marsh, it stands out like it's floating. I'll show you a picture in a minute about what I mean. Mm -hmm. If that was all marsh, it would stand out as if like an island then in a way. Yeah. So the area matches this hill, but then you've got the Welsh, for World Creek is Wheel Creek, where Wheel is search inquiry, and then Creek Hill up Nol Cain Tumulus. So that would be the just call it the Hillock of search inquiry. <laughs> now, from that description, he's searching, mm -hmm. and then the hill is called the, the Hill of Search Inquiry of a hill that is on an edge of a march where you've got a mighty rising river, a mighty rising sea, just 
couple of miles away. Yeah, it would have been all marshland, and I mean, <laughs> brilliant. Yeah, it it That's all brilliant. just sort of yeah, fantastic. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, yeah. So this is from Google Earth, just a street map view. Um, right at the bottom, down here, these are coal reams. Um, they they just to sort of drain the water off the land. Yeah. But then at the background, then you got Well Creek Hill. So yeah. all the surrounding land would be flat, and then you got this. If you drive along the M4, you can't miss it. It's just this big knoll sticking out with old trees on it, just just off the M4. Absolutely. I mean, I was in um uh Cambridgeshire not too long ago, and when you're in that sort of flat reclaimed land, when yeah. there is even just the slightest hill, it is so obvious from yeah. miles around, mm. and yeah. um uh thinking about looking and watching it's an ideal place to sort of survey the whole area oh yeah yeah you can just see for bloody miles because it's okay, so what was enki searching for so there's another story called the story of after horses um so it was enki who while speaking through a, a reed wall advised after horses of the impending flood which was sent by the gods to wipe wipe out humankind so he's like a Noah figure. Yeah. Enki, adv yeah, Enki advises Atrahasis to build a boat and gave him instructions on how to do this. Uh, one version of the Epic of Gilgamesh, the boat is an arc or circular in nature, um, which is interesting in his own right, because out in Iraq, in the, the marshes, they used a boat very similar to the, the coracle we use yeah. in, in the Seven, yeah. which is... Um, so yeah, that's that's really interesting the the use of coracles. Um, yeah, I think quite a few people have picked this up before, haven't they? Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's but it is very very interesting. Yeah. Right. So, so this after horses character, um, the actual name means exceedingly wise. Um. Which in, in itself is revealing when you convert that to uh, phonetic vowels. So I broke broken it down to R, Tra, Ha, and Sis. So R or Ak means and. Tra, very exceedingly or beyond the other side of. So you've got the exceedingly mm. bit for mm. there. Um, ha, I, I'm just using that as another A, as in. Yeah. yeah. But, and then you've got sis, which means murmur or whisper. So the Welsh gives both the exceedingly definition and the, the act of Enki speaking through a reed ball, the whisper from the other side of. Yes, yeah. You got beyond or the other side of. So Enki yeah. was talking to um, after horses from beyond the other side of a reed ball. And when you break it down into phonetic Welsh, you've got that story that that description. Oh, wow. Incredible. So whether after Haas is himself, that was his actual name or just, what is, I can't think of the word now, when you, you give a description to someone and it's the description of rather than yeah. the name. I, I, I don't know the, don't know the word, but um, I, I, uh, I can see where you're coming from that he's sort of, he's taken on what he's, the, mm. uh, what he's famous for essentially yeah. has become his name, yeah. So Udna pished him. Um I've got I couldn't find really anything of merit from, from that one. Hmm. But Zua Zudra, so the zoo there's no Z in Welsh. So Zoo, we got close to it, Sue, which is wise learned, or Sue, or Zoo oh <laughs> Sue mm. and Zoo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cause you, you can see what I'm doing, can't you? Yeah. A murmur, yeah. rumor, and then dra or tra, uh, very exceedingly or beyond the other side of. Mm. So it gives then the exceedingly wise murmur from beyond the other side. <laughs> right. So we got that name and that name, both given a description of the act. Yeah. Of Enki talking to whatever character name you wish to use. So Utna is the one I'm the most familiar with. Uh, these are all. Uh, so I assume these all, uh, Sisundra and um, 
uh, oh no, Zazundra and Atrasis, as you said, are all names of the sort of Noah character as they appear in different versions. Is that yes. right? Yeah. Well, the Atra Hartis, yeah. Yeah. So who's so? Where does Zazundra come from? Um, it, 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 this character, well, it, 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 all three of them. Then, sorry, would be the this Noah character. They, they are sorry. It, it is another. Yeah. Name. Sorry. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. Uh, but okay. they, they were called different. The character was called different names for some reason. Which makes me think that maybe after Harsis and Zuasudra were descriptions, mm. or maybe Udna pushed him. He's more of a name. He's more of a name. Yeah, okay. So, well, you're, this is going from the Welsh translations, phonetic translations of those names. Mm. That's what it gives us. Um, from a little tidbit from Marshall's new book is um, her research, she seems to think that um, Noah is the name of the Ark. Yeah, and not the person. All oh, right, yeah. Um, uh, so that this really fits in kind of nicely with that in a way that that, that there's conf sort of a bit of confusion over time with certain elements of the story, and yeah. the person and the person uh, gets uh, imbued with those mm. ideas, um, and that's where the names come from. So um, yeah, this this flies very well with me. This is great. Yeah, because that's just just triggered a thought in my head. No, there is a story in Gwent, and all I I just read in one of these folktale books, folktales of where um, a scared bower, which is a mountain not far from Abergavenny, um, it's got a crack in it, and is and one of the stories is Noah's boat. Hit this crack, it hit the mountain and caused a crack. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But if you look at the mountain itself, it looks like the keel of an upturned boat. Ah, brilliant. Which I'll be going into next time, but not <laughs> from that. But not from that perspective. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so yeah, that's got me thinking. Cool. I I I I was just um skewered recently, and I was yeah. at, the pub, at the pub skewered in. Oh right, yeah. And I've I've got a picture, but I'm talking about um it being split by a bolt of lightning, but it was sort of to do with Jesus, you know. Mm. Being, being, yeah, you know the one. Yeah, you that one as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's brilliant. I love yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I go. I'm gonna. Well, I'll go into detail next week. But I, I'm gonna put forward an argument that the Ascarid is not. It's a corruption of a different name. Okay. Um, but uh, if I went into it, I would just take too too long because I'd have to go through the old story. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> um. So that's out the horses. So, Margaret, or you could see. See, I uh, say Mago, mm. which is just from just from the corner from Mulcrick Hill. Yeah. Um, I I put on you. It it is worth emphasising you. It is not being suggested that Mulcrick Hill is the actual city of Eridu. They they've excavated that out in Iraq. Mm -hmm. So that Eridu is up in Iraq. This is big cigarettes and whatever. There, it it it's there. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying it's symbolically, at the least, being represented. On the ground in Southeast Wales by this hill. Mm -hmm. So, oh, which I wrote it right. It, it uh, like I said, it was um, definitely settled at some stage. So people did live there. So whether if 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 everything I'm saying it is is correct or partially correct or what have you, and people did come here and they did live there. They could well have worshipped the form of Enki there themselves. Yeah, um, and they may even called the place Eridu. Well, the, the the hill of search inquiry. So okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So right around Wilkrick Hill, like I said, this may go there. So we'll just go through some of these now, um, and this is just to try and add to that the argument I'm already putting forward. Um, so Enki was also known as the Stag of the Abzu and is associated with, with the Margur boat. Um, 
And this next description is from the Sumerian myth Enki and the World World Order, from again from ETCSL. Mm. Um, I'll just start from the year to go. They purify the river for me. They, the interior of the shrine for me, in my absolute sacred songs in, in the incantation resound for me. My barge crown, the stag of the Absu, trans transports me there most delightfully. It glides swiftly for me through the great marshes to wherever I have decided. It is obedient to me. The stroke callers make the oars pull in perfect unison. They sing for me pleasant songs, creating a cheerful mood on the river. Nigirisig, the captain of my barge, holds a golden scepter for me. I am Enki. He is in command of my boat, Stag of the Absu. I am the Lord. I will travel. I am Enki. I will go forth into my land, the Lord who determines the fates. I know that's a bit of a mouthful. Mm. <laughs> so Enki being a god of water is rightly associated with the Margo boat. Um, first thing of note is that next to World Creek Hill, Eridu, is the town of Mago, or in Welsh Magwyr. Phonetically almost identical to Margo. Coincidence, yeah, maybe. Um, so there are the Sumerian, the Welsh, and two close names to Margo. I'll just go on to those now. And what you'll find that all four of them have some kind of link then to these texts. Mm -hmm. So first of all, the Sumerian, which is Margo, um, it basically means a large boat or cargo vessel. So the Ma, this is from a Sumerian dictionary. Uh, Ma means boat or ship, and girl to return or to turn. Mm -hmm. So then if you use the phonetic Welsh, we have Ma, which means place, feel, spot, state, action. And girl, which the G-Y-R would be close to girl, uh, means drive, thrust, impulse, impetus. Um, which can mean the state of impulse implying movement of some kind. Mm -hmm. It also got, it glides swiftly for me through the great marshes to wherever I have decided. It's, it is obedient to me. I just restated that for, for a moment. So then we got the second one, the Welsh, which is Mar Gwir. Mar again is the same thing. Now Gwir is askew, crooked, curved or bent. So the Sumerian word has been borrowed into Akkadian as Makuru, a boat for a procession or a model boat, but it can also be used for any crescent-shaped object and even the gibbous moon. Which, so you got this, the Welsh gives it and the Sumerian gives it. Um, so the one gives it the crooked bent. Yeah. Uh, and, and the other one then, it gives this this movement of some kind, this drive, thrust, impulse, or impetus. Yeah, it glides swiftly for me through the great marshes. So, the the two words, the Sumerian and the the Welsh, both give some kind of description of what this boat is. Yeah, because I I I I'm not sure. I think it's like that sort of. Yes. You did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not yeah. very good drawing, I know, but <laughs> but I mean, you could see with with but both languages seem to have a word or a root, which implies, as you say, drive or thrust or impetus, but also implies, or or maybe through this association with the boat, a crooked yeah. bent boat boat yeah. shape, I guess. Yeah, and that's evident in both languages. Yeah. So cool. a lot, a, a lot of this is this. It it becomes harder to dismiss that there's, there's a coincidence between the two languages. Yeah. I mean, you, you're not going to get every word. That's just, but no. it it tends to be names of important things and things that were in these stories that seem to be kept rather than the general day to day sort of language. Yeah. 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 So these are um, words which are very close to um, the Welsh. Um, so you have Margui, which again, Mar, 
and then you have Gwee Water. So the Mark Gwee, which is close to, if I go back a page, is close to Mark Gwee. Mm -hmm. So this is another Welsh word. And if you break that down, you've got um, meaning place of water, which again, Enki being the Lord of Water who dwells in the marshes. Mm -hmm. And you have Marg Gwiri. I, I, that's probably wrong, but is, is it Gwiri? Gwiri? I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, anyway, that, that word means virgin, maiden, young girl. Um, so Marg Gwiri could possibly mean virgin place. Hmm. So then from the open lines of Enki and the Saga, again, from the ETCSL, is called Pure are the cities, and you are the ones to whom they are allotted. Pure is Dilman land, Pure is Suma, and you are the ones to whom it is allotted. Pure is Dilman land, Pure is Dilman land. I mean, they repeat the same thing quite over and over again. Mm. It's like, I, I'm stating something here. Yeah. Um, Virginal, yeah. yeah. Virginal is Dil Dilman land, Virginal is Dilman land, Pristine is Dilman land. And he laid her down all alone in Dilman. And the place where Enki had laid down with his spouse, that place was still virginal. So you've mm. got these four phonetically close words, all given descriptions of this area or something to do with this area. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So even Dilman land... Um, this is from the ETCSL again. Um, my barge crown, the stag of the Agsu, transports me there most delightfully. It glides swiftly for me through the great marshes to wherever I have decided. It is obedient to me. The stroke callers make their oars pull in perfect unison. They sing for me pleasant songs, creating a cheerful mood on the river. Nigir Sig, the captain of my barge, holds a golden scepter for me. So a pure is Dilman land, virginal is Dilman land. So if we break down Dilman, so you have Dil or Til or Dil or Til, which means thoughtless, forgetful, happy, which you've, you've then got pleasant songs, creating a cheerful mood on mm -hmm. the river. And then Man, even though it's a young goat in general use, it can mean will, wish, desire, and also Brilliant. crown. Mm. So you got. I have decided it is obedient to me. Will, wish, desire, obedient to me. You got crown, mm. the barge, and you got the stone. So Dillman in phonetic Welsh describes that that passage. But <laughs> there's a the picture on the right is another AI picture, and I asked her to draw Enki on the in the marshes. And it turns out that he looks exactly the same as Merlin. <laughs> <laughs> so do they know something? So yeah, it's just that, yeah. that one word, that one text, and it, it, it describes all our text in, it, in one word. Fantastic. As you say, there's just so many like crossovers. Yeah. You know they're they're not evident on the surface, yeah. and you just need to tease out the threads, and then and um, everything yeah. you need is there. Though, I mean, I couldn't have got any of this if I hadn't worked out the star map because mm. it wouldn't have made any sense. That's yeah. fascinating in itself. Yeah. So it's only by the fact of getting the star map and know where all these things are, then you can start looking at these stories and where they should be set. Yeah. And then yeah. it then it starts to go. Oh right, right. I mean, like obviously, I'm not putting everything into these. Um, it, it's always other stuff that. I mean, like we wouldn't have time to go through all this area. No. Um. So I think this is going to be the. I think it's going to be the last slide. Um. So, we have Avon Manwi or the River Mono, which is up there. Mm -hmm. um, we have the Trevanwi or Monmouth or the, the River Manu then because Man can mean 
um, crown. So you've got river of the crown of water, yeah. one possible translation. Monmouth is there, which is the town of the crown of water, where this crown is. Yeah. You have the Avonqui or the River Y down here, which is River Water. Down here, then you have the River Ask mm -hmm. or the Ava Avonoisk, um, where Oi means egg oven, which implies some kind of fertilization. Um, Caro Hill is where this, um, that, that they believe is a, um, a cow lying down. Um, I've tried to draw as accurately, accurately as possible. But on the on the landscape, it's got Caro Hill, and the close I can get is Caro, meaning deer, heart, or stag. Remember, Enki, there was this thing called the Stag of the Absu. Yes, so yeah, I, yeah, I was going to ask about that, yeah. So I'm thinking, is that, because that's all that diagram is, could, could it be a stag. Yeah. Because mm. uh, the landscape suggests it's it's a it's a stag. Um then we got Mago, which is around there. Um you got Pulth of Rhein. Now when he was Lord of the Underworld, he used to guard the underworld. And Pulth of Rhein, which is not far from Mulcrickle, just a stone throw, means the pit or pool of hell. Yes. Oh. So somewhere, somewhere around that area, the, the pool is still there. So whether, if you want to go down, dive deep in, in some really muddy waters. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bishton is where Formalhot is. Mm -hmm. And then, I, well, I haven't got I on it, but that is basically around that area as well. Which means uh, um, the dweller. Um, so wine daily ad means uh, the marsh dweller. Okay. So what you've got then is this area here then is the marshes. You've got, oh, if I just give it some of that a minute. Oh, yeah, I can so, see your shaded blue area at the bottom there. Yeah. The previous map. Right, yeah. So that's where the marsh would be. Yeah. Well, Crick Hill, the, the hill of search and inquiry is there. Mm -hmm. You got these. No, it's like somebody said, why have they got water? Was he got water coming out of his shoulders? And so you, you could say they mimic these two rivers. And so you've got yeah. these two rivers there. The, the yeah. river up. Are they are traditionally thought to be the Tigris and Euphrates or something like that? Out, out in Sumeria, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Is that identification made with Enki's shoulder rivers as well? Do they call them the... Uh... Um, no, um, because it, this can be drawn in other ways as well, with just one river coming out then as such. Yes. Um, and there's others then, you'd have a diagram where it comes all the way around here. And his fish in there as well, which oh, then, right. okay. oh, which would then match the yeah. seven. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you'd have the seven going that way with the fishes there. That one there, that mm. one there. You you got yeah. the the crown of water up the top. Mm. You got this caru there. You got the um, the hill of search and cry. You got me yeah. girl. I mean everything, and and over here then is the watery constellations. Okay. I was I was gonna say where do where um all right uh, so the Pisces is new podio that's going through or the swallow yeah um Capricorn all right the goldfish oh god and <laughs> yeah and then yeah. and then Aquarius is in <laughs> right okay so it, it's, gotcha. it's a, yeah in that area there yeah mm. yeah fascinating amazing the, the diagram. Match is matches the landscape, mm. and then all the descriptions match the landscape as well. Well, and he's standing right over Eridu, and mm. yeah, which does place he is he is the Lord of Eridu. He stood right over it. Yeah, 
Yeah. I mean, I've basically taken that seal, the seal image and just placed it over the two rivers of the Y and the Esk. Mm -hmm. And like no, I, I said, think, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's I think that's really interesting. Does, does, so, do you think there's almost like you can? There isn't just the star map per se, mm. or, or at least the star map works with other images or, or uh, yeah visualizations maybe should we can say of other ideas yeah which incorporates part of the star map as well but also yeah. can be read separately yeah um i won't go into too much like say i what, what i don't want to do is i mean it, it's difficult not to mm. um is put too many of my own interpretations i want i want i want people to sort of have a go at say all oh, right mm. um okay. That's at the moment. After the next one, um, I'll start adding some of my own interpretations to a lot of this. At the moment, it's more of use the star map, use the things that match it. Sure, you know, sure. In there. Cool. But the, but the next one, it becomes more difficult. Mm -hmm. I, I could tease you and say... Um, That is very difficult. Oh, I don't know how to put this. But <laughs> it's going to be a tease, whatever. <laughs> because, like, like, take this diagram and all that matches. Mm. When you go through certain areas and you look at the landscape and the description, like it does you, matches the landscape and then it matches the landscape somewhere else and somewhere else. Uh -huh. The difficulty I have is how did they come here from there and go right down? This landscape is perfect. We're going to just place all this on the landscape. That seems very okay. mysterious. So it is a, it's a, your problem is one with, um, uh, do you have a chicken and egg problem? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. And you yeah. not you don't know which came first. Well, I I've got my opinion. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um me and Adam the other day were talking about Britain as a place that people would come to to learn surveying mm. astro you know, well, geometry, astronomy, metrology and surveying. And then take that back somewhere, yeah, uh, or 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 you use Britain somehow as as a school or university, yeah, or a or a or and a place of devising these things, and then yeah. taking that back knowledge wherever and applying it to the. I mean that is re this is really an idea in its infancy, so I can't really yeah. say anything more than that, but. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've got the potential and ingredients to be such a place. Yeah. Yeah. Because then you got, like, from the story of Hen Wen, the people who came back here were ancestors. Yeah. Which implies that they were you in the first place. Yeah. Right. So. There and back again. There mm. and back again. Yeah. Mm. But you'd love, been... you'd love Marshall's new book, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> But could it be in here and back again and there again and back there again? And there could again, it just, and back yeah. again and there again. And back, could it yeah. just be in a constant passage of knowledge? Yeah. Yeah, certainly, certainly mean, seems potential. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's when they talk yeah. about when they talk about trade routes in this period, they um we, you know, we, I, I shared the other day that they've, they've said that the glass from that they found at Beads at Must Farm came from um, Iran. Mm. Um, our, and the, the, the immediate sort of reductionist point of view is that, well, that was probably traded with someone in the Mediterranean and then that went up to Central Europe and then it might have gone back east a bit and then it came, yeah. went up to Danube and then it went into Scandinavia and then it went into Britain. And I just think that's a bit short-sighted and there was Even, prob probably yeah. direct connections. And if yeah. there's direct trade connections, there's 
there's connections of ideas and people yeah. and well, relationships. E e even if what the, what you just described, but we came from one to the other to the other to the other, it came. It came, yeah, 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 <laughs> absolutely, yeah. yeah. So that you you know quite easily got one block to come along and just go, well, I'm going to take a book there and teach someone. Yeah, I mean, if if all that can come there through all these different ways, then sort of one block on a horse with a book yeah. or knowledge could easily have come. Absolutely, yeah, because the the as I say that the the trade of material goods for me is immediately a sign of a trade of ideas as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because of the, what what the um, when they classify the Celts and where they the Celts, they were out in Turkey as well. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. the, the, the exactly. knowledge, I mean, the, the knowledge of the way they did metal work in is, mm -hmm. is regarded as no, it was spread throughout all our domain. I mean, Turkey's only a stone throw from, from the, yeah, from, absolutely. So, yeah. if the Celts were there or, or the technology or the, let's call it the fashion then, was there in Europe, yeah. Yeah. then what else has gone between exactly. both? Yeah. Yeah. Though, which came first, the chicken or the egg? I don't know. Mm. But on the screen, it does mention the river ask with egg. So maybe the egg came first. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's any more slides. Oh, no, that, that, ignore that. All right. All right. That's fantastic, right. Steve. That's, Thanks, that Steve. is brilliant. So, so we have a, a possible place for Aradu and you say we're going to move on to Nippur next. That's that's it. We're going to follow the story. Mm -hmm. So if I go on this slide, we basically looked at this part. Yeah. So next time. We're going to look at, oh my God, that looks wrong. We're going to look at. <laughs> <laughs> We we'll look at that part. <laughs> <laughs> right, hang on. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know. I, I I don't know if you want to cut that out, but we. Do... <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Uh, I that don't part. know if that's better or worse. Oh, I think you got to leave that all in, Adam. <laughs> Absolutely, that's uh, uh, it's a bit okay, of fun. Brilliant, comic gold. Well, that's uh, um, so it won't just, it won't just be those bits, there'll be a lot more to it than that. But yeah, from this cylinder, see, we'll just be looking at those two bits. Can I ask Especially... a question about the yeah. planets briefly, Steve? Yeah, um, so, um, do you find the planets in multiple places on the um star map, um, rather than in what because obviously with a star, planets move around very quickly, that's it, yeah, yeah. So, are they are they can you? You, for instance, you gave us a couple of examples of the yeah. um, um, what are they called um, not omens. prophecies, omens. Yeah, that's right. Omens, yeah. Um, are there are there multiple Venus omens in in? There are, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I sometimes they're in stories. Um, um, like the 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 descent of Venus, for example. Um, and basically, she goes. Into the underworld, where have you? I mean, even though that's not a planetary omen, the end up place of Venus um, is basically said the tumulus of Venus. Boom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and it's it's in the right constellation where the story would take place. Right. Uh, so, so some of them, but it, it tends to be the more important ones. Mm. Um, well, the more important stories, or the more important no, the, uh, right. constellations, or the more important oh, omens. Um, oh, more so important opens. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Basically, an, an omen. So, if if Venus um, was in a constellation of the, of the crook, when when Venus approaches the crook, they'd be yeah. one. You got Gwyn and Milwa, Venus a warrior. What is saying, as as far as I can understand it, is when. You've got to remember, you've got to take what's on the ground and take it, put it back up into the sky. Yes, yeah, yeah. So you look in the sky, you see Origa, the crook, and you see Venus approaching the crook. And it's an omen. For it's war. an omen for a war or battle. But what type of war, what type of battle um, is unclear. But there, there must have been some significance to that position of Venus for there to be an omen like that. Yeah, okay. 
But what the actual event was, was it, because it's on the star map, could that event be a celestial in nature? Celestial event, yeah, absolutely. Rather, I'm, I follow you, yeah. So every, everything I say, you've got to try and also, as above, so below, but then you've got to go as below. Below, so above, yeah. So, so above. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> That yeah that okay that's answered it for me. So there is, uh, I I think what I was getting at is that on the ground there isn't necessarily yeah. one place in the whole star map which you could associate with a planet. There is um, multiple places. There's, and there's multiple are... multiple places, and and there's also a bat. Um... <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's think of the word now. Um... Oh, what's the word? Each planet will have uh, a. Oh, it's just on the tip of my tongue. Each planet will have a place in the heavens where that planet exerts its greatest influence. Exaltation of planets. Thank you. Right. Right. So it's called, the Greeks call it the exaltation of planets. Well, Venus has got two. Um, it's that important Venus was considered. It's got two exaltations. Jupiter's got one, Saturn's got one, Mercury's got one, Mars has got one, um, etc. So they've all got the moon has got one. Yeah. So they've all got um a specific place allocated in the heavens, and they're right, all marked on the ground. And okay. every single one's marked on the ground. So it has a a a a, a place or position that it's uh is more quintessential uh, that's what exerts uh, his, his yeah. greatest influence okay because because so, these were regarded as being divine things then yeah they are the more yeah. most influence over the people then you could say okay okay yeah. Yeah. so you're more likely to find uh, associations with that planet in that area of the star map um it would be one association because they are bump x marks the spots type of mm-hmm um, like Jupiter is marked by a cane, uh, the Sun is marked by a standing stone, Mars is marked by a standing stone, um, Mercury is a towering, Venus has got two, um, Saturn has got one massive cane. Yeah, right. Mm. Fitting. It, was, it was that important, I should imagine. But Saturn, yeah. is a, there's nothing there to indicate it would be Saturn, except that you, you go by right of sense and declination to find some other thing, and it's is is on where it should be in the right constellation at the, the right level. Yeah. So it could be like thirty six degrees um, goldfish. It's not like, but it could be thirty six goldfish. Um, and where you go in the goldfish, thirty six degrees along that arc, that's where they'd be on oh, that right. arc. Okay. Brilliant. Yeah. And then you got the uh, the exaltation of the sun, um, which is a big lump of a standing stone in the right location, and a nearby farm is called Craigahail, which means the stone of the sun. Sun, yeah. So, yeah, and the moon is marked. Is, do you um do you? So, so Hugh Evans, sorry if this is taking it a, a bit of a step too far, and if you yeah. want to, if you want to say we'll cover this in the future, that's fine. Yeah. Um. I'll, so I'll make this my last question. Um. Do you feel like you have learned anything about the, the um, the spirituality of the people who did this from your investigation? Do you think you do you think you have a better grasp of some of the uh, of what these people were getting at and trying to do than maybe someone who hasn't experienced the star map in the way that you have? Um, have, have I had any kind of epiphany and gone, no, no, I, I, I've had no holy grail shining. No, 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 <laughs> no, I don't, I don't mean it quite like that. <laughs> no, I know, I know. Yeah. I just, <laughs> the answer to that. But I find myself when I walk around, it's, it's sometimes I, I I just imagine all these people building the stuff and walk around having their daily lives and um 
it's it's it's, it's, it's I, I don't know how to explain this, but because I've become so familiar with it all, mm. and I I know the customs of that constellation, any if you want to call it anything, um, it, it's like. I can imagine people there worshiping this. Um, there's one specific location where there's a, a flat stone lying down, big, big stone recumbent. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it wouldn't surprise me if that's the place where this modern concept of in Druidry, when you got the the stone in the middle of a stone circle with all the stones all the way around there. Yeah. Mm. Um, and they'd stand on the middle one as some kind of way to as an altar as such. Yeah. But when I'm there, because it's near a certain star which has some kind of negative activity, I just feel that there would have been somebody there at some point praying to the heavens for these events not to happen on this stone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you mean. It, what that, you got that, it? Yeah. So I was just going to say that that immediately snags with me about what you're saying about praying to a certain saint or a certain star. Mm. Where how, how much more effective is that if you go to the place on the ground that represents that star on the heaven yeah. and then apply your prayer from there? Yeah. From the yeah. yeah. Does that make? Does it give it more potency? Does it give it more? I, I, yeah. The answer, I, I don't no, know. No, no, it's, it's I, fascinating I, to think about, isn't it? I've never tried it myself, but it's, there are plenty of people who go to certain yeah. sites without even knowing what the site really is. Yeah. And they they can have all manner of success, even from, well, they, they believe that they feel something. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah no, um, there's, a, there's a lot of, lot of reports of, of that and healing yeah. events as well. Yeah. 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 Awesome. That's great. Thanks so much for that, Steve. That's brilliant. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Again. No worries. So I'll, uh, I haven't finished doing the next one. That's um, all right. No problem. When I have, I'll, I'll let you know. Yeah. That's great. Well, if you